Hey guys, just wanted to do a quick video on uh, the wood stove I put in my um, 37 foot travel trailer here. I did some adjusting uh, to get it to fit in there with the furniture that came with it. This used to have, well I guess it still has, a pull out sofa bed which is over here now. I switched the dining table uh, with that, pulled all the chairs out except for one, it's just me. So anyway, so the wood stove is a um, pleasant hearth. I picked it up used. People only used it for a year. Uh, I think it's new, like 850 bucks. I paid 350. So also came with an auxiliary fan. Um, anyway, so basically, I just did it as easy as possible. That I, the way that I could think of doing it. Um, as you can see, you have uh, pavers, uh, 12 inch by 12 inch pavers. I think there's so three by four, 12 of those. Um, the biggest thing that I wanted people to understand is that this is a trailer and I don't want to, it's a new trailer actually, and I don't want to make any changes to it that would make it unsellable. Um, sort of burning down, hopefully that doesn't happen. Um, but, so I did it so it completely can be taken out. Um, you put the sofa back in, the table where it's supposed to go, and you have no idea that uh, it was even there. So, the way I did it... Um, of course, like I said, you've got your pavers there. Uh, this is, these are 24 inch, I believe, galvanized, what they call gavelum. Uh, I just cut those to size for just heat shielding. Now, if you look closely, I put it one inch spacers in there to allow airflow to come up. So uh, on, the, on top of the pavers, I left about a three quarter inch space um, underneath. So, oh look, a screw. Um, underneath so that that allows that airflow to be pulled and throughout the uh gavelum. so there's just no excessive heat happening uh you're supposed to technically have a 16 inch clearance from any combustibles on this stove if you do this it cuts it down 66 percent so within 8 to 11 inches i'm well within that clearance same thing goes for the back of course um now on the window, as you can see, this is a sliding window. I open the window, it's relatively simple, just a lot, there's a process behind it. I went to a steel place um, that does recycled steel and cut sheets and all kind of thing. They cut me a piece of three foot by three foot, um, 16 gauge galvanized steel. Um, so it's a little thicker. Um, I just took the screen out, cut it, uh, to the parameters of the screen and pretty simple just kind of wedged it in there I did uh, silicone the outside all the way around I did run a couple screws in the frame which eh, I didn't really want to have to do that but it's just holding it there better um, so yeah pretty simple there I still need to take this off I have not fired up the stove just yet um, I because clearance from this this is a combustible item we don't want that probably isn't going to look as good but whatever so this should be 18 inches this is real close from this stove pipe to that cabinet i think it's like 17 and three quarters so we're real close um if i have to i can put a shield over this or something but i think we'll be okay um, this is single wall um i did single wall all the way out and up and i'll show you how on the outside how i did that but um really of all the people I talk to you're supposed to do single wall in and double wall to triple wall out to allow that uh heat smoke whatever to expel out easily um if it cools down too fast I guess your your chimney or your stovepipe can creosote up which I have a I have a cleaner for that I have a brush and all that so I'll just clean it out once a month I have a big I'll show you outside what I did to make it easy to clean so anyway that's the inside um wasn't too bad. This stove's a little big for the unit. Um, I was going to go with some of those smaller ones that you see some people use in their campers and RVs and stuff, but they're way too expensive. I just couldn't justify spending $800 to $1,500 for a little tiny stove that you have to use little kindling for. I can get a 16-inch log in this, or round, whatever you want to say. However they cut fire was usually 16 inches, so more than enough this thing will cook me out of here this is rated for up to 1200 square feet i'm not going to heat it up hot all the time probably i'll have to play with it a little bit i'm sure but i will be keeping those windows on either side cracked uh just to allow a little bit of airflow um 
plus in a small space like this, you you need the airflow for the stove. Otherwise, you'll asphyxiate, asphyxiate yourself and you'll die in your sleep. I don't want to do that. So um, anyway, I'm just a novice at this. I'm not an expert. So definitely consult an expert if this is something you're interested in doing, if this is how you're doing. I live in western Montana. So uh, on a friend's property and there's just no way I was going to use propane or electric heat. I mean, I do the electric heat, but any trailer, anybody knows that they're not that well insulated. So you're just going to constantly run that. This is going to cook me out. I'm going to be nice and hot and warm. Plus the ambience of the fire is nice. So just me and the dog. So with that, I'll take you guys outside here real quick. Um, I have not skirted the trailer yet. That is on my to-do list. I thought heat was more important. So anyway, I just got this part done today. So if we look, um, that's the outside. Uh, I got the stovepipe free from somebody. Had to buy an extra couple of items. Apologize if it's windy. Um, I just use a four by four treated post in the ground. There's my dog. Um, yeah, right in camera, thanks, appreciate it. Uh, anyway, so four by four treated post. I only put it two feet in the ground because it's not really load bearing anything other than just holding up that pipe. I did concrete it in. Um, anyway, and then I just run plumber's tape around this, cinched it up tight. Uh, if we look in here, I ran that extra pieces of that galvalume and dropped a screw there, I guess. Uh, and I just ran that over, screwed it to the post. I 45, 45 the ends of this. So then uh, I ran two wood screws, if you look closely here, just to touch this stovepipe. So we're just protecting that wood from getting, it probably would never catch on fire, but I just wanted to be ultra safe on that. So just a little bit of breathing room. Um, and of course I did that on either side there. And then, I mean, this, this is nothing pretty, but I just needed it to work. So then I cinch these together onto the stovepipe with some plumber's tape and then of course screwed my two by fours uh to the post and then ran that plumber's tape all the way around um so if we look out here um just kind of how i have this done so i'm gonna run another uh brace probably i don't know if i just to do wire or plumber's tape or something just off the top of that ladder because we're talking that's 24 uh, that's eight foot of stovepipe right there just off the T. So, so the T, I wanted to talk about that real quick. So this is a clean out and has a clean out cap. I can get right under there. I can see right into this. It's really nice and easy. So I can get in there and clean that creosote out real easy. Uh, if I had to on the inside, pretty easy. Just, un just unscrew the, the T, the 90 and run, I run it through that way too. So relatively simple. Um, Anyway, yeah, that's, I think that's basically it. I don't think I have any, if you guys have any questions, you shoot me some comments, whatever. I'll see if I can get back to you. Um, yeah, have a great one. Thanks for watching.